Hey everyone, yesterday was a fun episode because we got to come to some sort of mutual understanding with Juana using our fists. And today is going to be an exciting episode because we are going to concoct a plan to try to figure out if public security is behind all this, if they're the ones that are tracing phone calls and things like that. So let's check it out. Tsukumo, work your magic, please, and thank you. Ah, just the two I've been waiting for. That's, he sits the way I sit. In chairs. Just any chair. At my desk, wherever. I always sit cross-legged like that. We are the same. No, I knew there was a reason that I enjoyed Tsukumo so much, his character. Slouch forward? Yes. Actually, yes. <laughs> I'm like a gremlin. <laughs> Excellent work, by the way. Hey, got those burner phones ready? <laughs> of course I do. Who do you think I am? I still don't fully get what's going on. Yagami-san, what are we gonna do with these? Okay, I'll break it down. First, we call Kawana on one phone. Let's say this one here. Then we use this other phone to call Reiko Kusamoto, using them that way. The phones won't be connected to each other, but their voices will be relayed so they can talk normally. Oh, okay. And then? If public security finds out Reiko Kusamoto's talking to Kawana, they'll trace the call without actually finding him. Then we can see exactly who they send without risk of being seen ourselves. Mm-hmm. I think I'm getting it. Surely you don't intend to do that here, do you? That would put a beacon on us for Kawana-san's enemies. Yeah, we'll do it somewhere remote. We need a place where nobody would raise an eyebrow at an army of public security boys. And it's gotta have a good vantage point. Hmm. There's a building under construction not far from here. It's late, so no one should be around that may get involved unintentionally. Where is it? It's right near Seirio High. There's a crane by the river, too. You'll know when you see it. Okay, you two stay put. I should be able to handle this alone. Uh, you sure about that? Let me at least put out a drone, Yagamishi. Even if it isn't much. I'll use it to capture the faces of Kawana-san's pursuers. <laughs> That'd be good. Okay. Um... If we're going by the school, can we go see Amasawa? Way up here, huh? Alright, let's take a cab. Okay, so basically... We're gonna put, like, Kawaii and, um, Reika on speakerphone. And so they're gonna think that he's calling from the phone that Yagami has that's listening in. Wait. I don't get it. <laughs> Both of the phones together, right? I thought each phone had to be in a different location so that they can't track Kuwana. I think I, I thought I understood it. But now I'm I'm not sure if I do, actually. But I guess we're just gonna roll with it. What a waste. And see what happens. Kawana will be calling us from somewhere, from elsewhere. And then what, it's gonna be like a three-way call with Reika? Or maybe they only need to hear Kawana's side of the call? Okay. That's kind of what I was thinking, but not, not exactly. Didn't have it all worked out. 
But I had the gist of it. All right. This must be the construction site Tsukumo was talking about. Yagami Sheep, I've confirmed your position. Yeah. I think I can spot whoever comes close from here. I'm gonna call Kawana on the burner now. Understood. It's Kawana. You ready? I'm about to call Reiko Kusumoto. Once you're connected, we take it from there. It's been five years since I last spoke to her. Yeah. Can't imagine this won't be awkward. I know. Okay, do it. And she's there with her son right now. Yes, hello? This is Kitakata from Kurokawa Academy. What? You'll have to forgive me for this, but the position I'm in required me to reach out to you. I would never have done this otherwise. I should also note, there's a high probability this phone call is being tapped. I see. Very well, then. It's been 13 years, Kusumoto-san. So it has. Kitakata-sensei. I've read about your accomplishments, to think you'd become a vice minister. You never really know how things are going to work out. Ah, uh, but that's not true at all, Kusumoto-san. You were always destined to move up in the world. I've got to be honest with you. A woman as virtuous and as capable as you deserves the world and then some. But... How is Mitsuru-kun? I'm afraid he's still asleep. Nothing's changed. I see. I wish I had the words. What is it you wanted? If you've been watching the news, you've probably already heard. I've become a prime suspect for a crime. They think I murdered Yokosawa in her apartment. I've heard. Obviously, it wasn't me who killed her, of course. Do you happen to remember Sawakun by any chance? The girl from your class. She was the only one of those students who ever came to visit Mitsuru. But even then, that's been at least ten years now. I got a letter from her once. She wanted to tell me she'd become a teacher. But I never did reply. And that was the last I'd heard from her. I see. So back to my question. What do you want? I hope you weren't planning to ask me for a favor. I'm afraid the answer would be no. No, it's not that. It's just... I wanted to let you know that at some point, someone may come to you to ask a few questions about me. I thought I should give you a heads up. I'll make every effort to ensure they won't cause any trouble for you, Kusumoto-san. I'm sorry about this. I'll try to handle it from my side. So in your opinion, then, do you believe anything related to you could cause me any trouble? Don't worry. I'm sure you'll be just fine. We're almost to the signal. Kill the headlights. Two cars inbound. Looks like we were right on the money. This proves Reiko Kusumoto's phone is compromised. And thus, public and security is involved. there's one organization capable of tracing a call and moving on it. It's gotta be public security on the hunt for Kawana. Public security is really coming straight to you by car? No. There's no way they can mobilize their people that quickly. My guess? It's gotta be the prefectural police that they've got in their pocket. Or it's just RK. I will say it's been great to hear your voice again. But this should be the last time you ever hear from me. I'll try my best. 
I understand. Goodbye. Oh, guess we got some more fights coming in on our hands here. Looks like it's RK. Hey, look. It's a drone. It has a phone attached to it. Shoot it. Shoot it down. You sure? Uh, just take it down. Hurry it up. Hey, what the fuck are you aiming at? I can't hit it. It's too small. <laughs> Shit. That's dangerous. Damn, dude. How the hell are we supposed to chase down a drone? And where the fuck is this Kuwana guy? Who knows, man? They called us in to catch this shithead, but how the hell are we supposed to do that? It's fucked up. Do we look like spec ops? Yeah, right? But at least you gotta shoot that thing. <laughs> this is my second time, actually. I took a few shots at some kids in a park. <laughs> I aimed at the ground and sent those little shits running for their lives. That's fucked up! <laughs> We're done here. Pack it in! I had six punks and only one gun between you by my count. Who the fuck are you? It was you guys in charge. I'm sure Kawana would have had this whole thing solved a long time ago. Well, then again, I suppose I do have to give you credit for how fast you made it here. That was my gun, asshole! Not anymore, Who's the one giving asshole. the orders? You may as well just level with me. You guys are RK's bottom rung, right? It sounds like you must know Kuana. <laughs> well, I guess we're not gonna be leaving here empty-handed after all. Come on! We're taking this guy in, boys! Fuck him up! <sighs> here we go again. Come on. For sure. Who sent you here? The order came from the head honchos in RK. You mean Soma? Not that high up. It was one of the bosses. There's a bunch of them. What did they tell you to do once you found Kuwana? They just said to catch him. Well, they also made it very clear not to kill him. <laughs> like we'd pull the trigger. We never even heard what our cut was. Just another useless grunt. <laughs> tell me, gentlemen. How would you feel if you found out you were just pawns in public security's game? Uh, we're playing what game now? I suggest you quit RK while you can. Go tell your buddies, get them out too. Otherwise, they'll keep you in the dark, use you and toss you aside. And then, you'll end up in a ditch there's no crawling out of. Very generous of Yagami to offer that advice. Yes? Pardon me. 
You would be Reiko Kusumoto, correct? Who are you? Sir, it's a little late for this. And how'd you get in here in the first place? I've expressly forbid having visitors. Public security? <laughs> Come now. I'm a coordinator with the National Police Bureau, but I'm sure you're familiar with my division of public security. Bondo is my name, ma'am. Are you now? Well, I'm afraid coordinator is rather vague. I have a more public-facing title as well, of course. But I'm trying to be discreet here, so let's not get bogged down with minor details. It's in our best interests. I'm afraid that won't help. I've already seen to that. What is this? There's a question I need answered with some urgency, Kusumoto-san. It concerns the disappearance of a certain individual. Huh. About five years ago, a man vanished off the streets of Kamurocho. I'm sure you'll oh, recognize boy. him. Oh boy. Hawaii? A former classmate of Mitsuru-kun here, Shinya Kawai. I believe there are things you might know. I can say that with some level of certainty, as a matter of fact. Why is he coming to her about Kawai? I thought he was going to ask her about Kuwana, because she just got off the phone with him. Did he make some kind of connection based on that phone call? Who do you work for? Ugh. Chapter 11. Let's do it. Undercover. A shadow looms over Yagami and Kuwana. Japan's National Intelligence Agency Public Security fixes its gaze on Reiko Kuzumoto of the Ministry of Health. Five years ago, Kuwana prompted her to take revenge on Shinya Kawai for pushing her son to the brink. Secrets can only lie dormant so long, and upon their waking, chaos ensues. Undercover. A few days later. You've done it again, Tsukumo. Can't believe you found it. <laughs> I figured Mitsuru Kusumoto would be in one of the better hospitals around the health ministry. That narrowed it down to just a few locations. Then I pinpointed the exact one through sheer determination. And that led you to Toto University Hospital. So Mitsuru is still lying in a coma there? Yep. Reiko Kusumoto has been visiting her son every night for the past 13 years. Even after she became vice minister. Every if night. If you gentlemen want to meet her in person, that would be your best chance. But Yagami, you seriously think you can convince Reiko Kusumoto to turn herself in? Well, I'm gonna try at least. She's at the top of the food chain. If it comes out that she committed murder, the whole country's gonna lose it. If they hadn't tried to hide it, nobody else would have needed to pay for it. Sawa sensei. Yeah, you're right. And if she confesses to killing Kawhi, public security will run out of reasons to keep defending RK. So in theory, that should free up the police to pursue Soma about Sawa-sensei. Totally agree with you there. But Kawana-san's against that, right? Didn't he say he wouldn't let her turn herself in? Yeah, that's why he's not in the loop on this. So you're just gonna show up? You do know she's probably surrounded by public security at all times, don't you? Just means we gotta be prepared for that. Like the professional detectives we are. Prepared? How? Just leave it to us. Yagami-san, I gotta go get ready. Let's meet at Toto University Hospital. Got it. See ya. <laughs> so what do you need from me in this, Yagami? You got any old acquaintances in RK? 
Think you can find out where Soma and Akatsu are? <laughs> you forget who you're talking to? Why wouldn't I be able to cover that? I knew a few ex-Tojo guys who go in and out of RK on the regular. Thanks. But watch your back. If they find out you're spying on them, they won't like it. I'll be ready. Like the professional ex-Yakuza I am. See ya. <laughs> See ya. <laughs> he's rough around the edges, but in the end, he comes through. Oh yeah, he does. Yeah. Always. Turns out he's got extra time on his hands. Why don't you hire him at your office, Yagamishi? <laughs> I'll talk about that with Kaito-san once he recovers. Anyway, sorry Tsukumo, but we have to take Sukiura from you again. <laughs> Why start apologizing now? It's all good. We'll talk again soon. Yeah, speaking of Kaito, is he at that same hospital? Maybe we could go visit him? I miss him. I should head to Toto University Hospital and convince Reiko Kusumoto to turn herself in. Well... We don't know what that public security guy was, uh... What happened after he got there? Is she even gonna be there? Dude, there's no way she's gonna uh, turn herself in. Sugira. <sighs> we know Kitakata Sensei, please don't speak. Your phone is compromised by public security. I'll give it back to you after this. I'm sure it's bugged. And we wouldn't want anyone listening in now, would we? We'll take a few laps around the block and then drop you back off at the hospital. I'm sorry, but we just need a bit of your time. Very well. Who are you people? We're just local detectives, but Kitakata Sensei is an acquaintance of ours. We know about Mitsurakun, and we know that five years ago, a man named Shinya Kawai mysteriously disappeared and died. I have no idea what you're saying. But you do. I know how this must come across right now. So I assure you, we aren't the ones posing a threat. Fine. What is it you want, then? All I want is the truth. In your own words. About Shinya Kawai. And how you carried out his murder. You're mistaken. I didn't do it. She's not going to confess. The other day you received a call from Kitakata Sensei, didn't you? He goes by the name Kuana now and works as a handyman. Well, if Jinchou. anybody can get her to, it's He made that Yagami. call because we needed to confirm something. Confirm what? Whether or not you were being watched by public security. <sighs> public security, you say? Is she surprised at all? Or maybe she already had a hunch? As it turns out, you are. Your cell phone is bugged. They can even use GPS to trace who's on the other end of the line. That kind of trace is only possible with cooperation from the cellular providers. Unless you're public security, who could pull something like that off in secret. They want to hit you where you're vulnerable. And that's what you are now, after Kuana. Do you understand, Kusumoto-san? <sighs> You must really be something special. You were never in this job for yourself. It fell into your lap as your predecessors fell like dominoes. That's why you don't owe anyone anything. You're free of constraints. And Mitsuru-kun's tragedy even gained you public sympathy on top of it. Combine all that with a capable bureaucrat like you, there's no telling what you could accomplish. You're cleaning up house, tackling the revolving door problems. Things you know are the right moves, but with no regard for the consequences. I understand even the cabinet gauges your opinion, since you have so much public support. But I think that's also made you some enemies. 
Most likely whoever's holding public security's leash. I have more than a few enemies. I'm well aware of that. And I have no doubt public security would comply with them. To be quite frank, public security only exists to maintain the status quo. The establishment is made up of various powers which control politics and finance. But naturally, each branch has its own agendas, goals, ideas of justice, which leads to all sorts of issues and hindrances, which you call constraints. The more individuals who make up society, the more unavoidable that is. Are you implying it's public security's job to loosen those constraints? Hm. There is more to it than that. The world we live in requires all kinds of value systems to coexist, even in chaos. But if you loosen the constraints too far, the fall of the state is inevitable. In that regard, public security's role is to stabilize and maintain the state even while bound by constraints. In other words, the constraints of these powers are precisely what are protected by public security. So the fact that I am not caught up in all that does, indeed, make me something of a pesky foreign object. A pesky foreign object. I see. So to these establishment people, you're something to be excised. Hmm? I guess there's bullying among adults in high places, too. Yeah. Now we know why they were looking for any kind of weakness in you. And that's when they turned the spotlight on Shinya Kawai's disappearance. An event that was triggered by Akihiro Ohara's case. You know the one, I presume. Yes. An active duty policeman exacted revenge on the bully who drove his son to suicide. Your enemies must have heard that and thought to themselves, what would Reiko Kusamoto have done to her son's bully? <sighs> I'm guessing that's what prompted public security to make their move. As the details of Ahara's case came to light, a group of thugs calling themselves RK started looking for Shinya Kawai, all to find out that he was kidnapped five years ago, probably killed. Mm. Okay. I never did anything out of revenge. Naturally, she wasn't going to divulge any secrets, just having met me. And I don't have enough evidence to make her talk. Even after finding out Kawhi disappeared, public security still had to verify it. But if they found out you were involved, that'd be a win for them. They finally know Reiko Kusumoto's weakness. How long are you going to keep talking? As public security figured out, the bullying cases involving Toshiro Ihara and your son share a common link. Kawana. That link being Sawa-sensei. Oh. <laughs> she was Mitsuru-kun's classmate and Toshiro Ihara's teacher. Not only that, she was also linked to Ahara's murder victim, Mikoshiba. She was his master teacher. So, not long after the murder, RK came to Ijincho and broke into her home. That must have been when they got Kawana's name out of her. I think Sawa Sensei suspected that Kawana was involved in Mikoshiba's murder. Then Soma steps in, with his professional interrogation skills, to beat and scare her into spilling everything. Kusumoto-san, you knew she was killed, right? Kawana should have told you over the phone. Wait, are you... not one of his colleagues? He said he wouldn't cause me any trouble, and that he would never call me again. Kawana and I are competitors on a temporary ceasefire. We're not colleagues. She's been flustered since I mentioned Sawa Sensei's name. This is my chance to ask her questions I can't ask anyone else. Ooh, man. Welcome to Yakuza, plot more layered than an onion and stinking stronger than one. <laughs> yeah, the, things are getting complex here. What's up, sacred icon Zanzibar and Marcus? How am I doing pretty well? Just trying to keep up with everything that this game is laying out in front of me right now. Just trying to keep up. So, she has a lot of enemies. And one of her enemies has been trying to find dirt on her, I guess, probably for a while. 
and when the Mikoshiba case happened, they got the idea from Ihara taking revenge on his, uh, on the person who pushed his son to commit suicide. They made the, they got the idea that maybe she had a hand in, maybe she did something similar. And so they started looking, they sent RK to look for Kawaii to find out you know, he disappeared, so where is he? Is he dead? Is he alive? And if he is dead, could they find out, like, that she was linked to it? And so that's why Sawa-sensei was... Um... That's why Sawa-sensei was... Was, um... That's why they went after her. That's why she was targeted because she's got all these connections to all these different bullying and murder cases being a classmate, a teacher, and all these things to all these different people uh, a student and all this stuff and that's pretty much what I've gotten out of this so far hopefully I didn't miss anything and hopefully that's pretty correct, pretty accurate Okay, so, what do we ask her? How's your son doing now? Has public security contacted you? Tell me about Kawaii's murder. Let's ask how her son is doing first. How's your son doing now? He could wake up any minute now. Of course, that's been true for the last 13 years. I see. She's been hoping. We this transferred him to Toto University Hospital just this year, hoping they could spur his recovery. But it turns out they don't do anything much different from the previous hospital. All I can do is wait. Oh man, that is really, that's heartbreaking. Um, has public security contacted you? Has anybody from public security contacted you? Have you been approached by any strangers? I have my suspicions. What are their names? I imagine what they wanted was to exploit your weakness to control you. Because if all they wanted was to eliminate you, some kind of accident would be easily arranged. Yes. I suppose you're right. Do you have any idea what these people are after? Do you mind sharing? What they want is control of the pension fund which is under the Health Ministry's jurisdiction. Pension Fund? An independent agency within the Ministry manages the National Pension Fund. It's taxpayer funded, and it's worth 160 trillion yen. Of course. What? A huge amount of money. And certain groups want to take bigger risks with that money in order to generate more profit. In other words, they want the Health Ministry to use taxpayer money to gamble. They believe that's the only way to rebuild Japan's faltering economy and secure the future of this country. It was only a matter of time. I mean, would it work? Of course. If the gamble actually pays off. But if we lost the gamble, then we wouldn't be able to guarantee anything for the citizens of this country in their golden years. That's why the health ministry manages those funds conservatively, even if it means the returns are lower. Okay. I'm starting to understand now. You do? Don't leave me in the dust, Yagami-san. To be able to gamble all this taxpayer money to save the economy, they need a change of management. And here's Kusumoto-san, head of the office. And she's beyond the control of even the ministers. Her position has the power to take action, to override the way the pension fund is managed. But not only does Kusumoto-san have the power, she has the support of the people. If a new vice minister were to try it, they'd be stopped cold by the constraints. So, I think what they want is to find dirt on her so they can blackmail her, so basically they can pull her strings. Um, because she is very powerful and has the backing of the people. 
So that's why they wanted to find her weakness and exploit it? Exactly. And if the 160 trillion yen gamble were to fail, we can blame the whole thing on Kusumoto-san anyway. Damn. Okay. Oh, wow. 160 trillion. <sighs> I'm guessing they've already contacted you about it? That's an assumption. Tell me about Kawaii's murder. I have to ask you about Shinya Kawaii. You killed him five years ago. With your own hands, didn't you? <sighs> I understand what your feelings must be towards Kawaii. But was that really the only answer? If you've spoken to Kitakata Sensei, then you must know about the video. Of how Mitsuru was treated. I do. Aside from Kawaii, the other students pretended like nothing happened. They took no responsibility. They put on their sad faces, and they came to visit Mitsuru at the hospital. But looking back on it now, I don't think they really wanted Mitsuru to wake up. In fact, that's what they were checking on. And what did I do? I bowed my head and thanked them. It was only later that Kitakata Sensei showed me the video. That's when I knew that those kids going unpunished was wrong. And your solution was to pull them into the quagmire? Make them accomplices in murdering Kawaii? If you already know so much, what more do you need to ask? I get it now. Let me reiterate. We are not your enemy. Then please, let me go. Anything you want me to tell Kawana? I do. He needs to run. Far away. Public security has their sights on him. His capture is not a question of if, but when. He's in danger if he remains in the country. And once public security has him, they will extract everything he knows. You mean he'd be tortured? Yes. Somewhere well beyond the public eye. No one can withstand what they'd do. He'd tell them everything. And as for me... They would expose your vulnerability, making you their pawn. Most likely. They'd gamble away the taxpayers' money, and I'd never purge the corruption in the health ministry. I get that. But what does it matter? What? Because in my opinion, you need to turn yourself in, Kusumoto-san. <laughs> you want me to admit to manslaughter? You think I killed a real man? I say he was less than one. Ooh. Shinya Kawai. He was little more than a subhuman brute. And you saw it. You saw what that brute did to my son. I hated Kitakata Sensei. He was an incompetent teacher. An idiot who turned a blind eye to Mitsuru being tortured. But that changed when he suddenly showed up eight years later. And then he showed me that video. He said, every bully in that video, they deserve to be punished. That it was the only way to get closure. You took him up on it? But you of all people should have known better. True. You're right about that. I struggled with it quite a bit. It's an unconscionable act, no matter how deep your animosity runs. But Kitakata Sensei's words hung on. I couldn't get them out of my head. I saw for myself. I went to Kamrocha, where I'd heard Kuai was working, at a girl's bar. So you know, after Mitsuru jumped that day, Kawai came to me in tears to apologize. I hadn't seen him in all that time. If he'd frozen in place when he saw me, if he'd been the slightest bit apologetic, I might have been able to stay my hand. I take it he didn't do any of that. <laughs> right. He didn't even recognize my face. And that's hardly the worst part of it, actually. When he saw me, he took me for some bawdy 
cougar on the prowl for young men. If you got the cash, I'll show you a good time, he said. All those tears he'd shed years earlier were a farce. But I knew them. Deep down, I'd already known that. That was it. That was the moment I lost all doubt about killing him. And as for those other kids who bullied Mitsuru, they should thank me they didn't share his fate. Yeah. But that's why. She's cold. That's why I don't feel like I have any sins to atone for. Every night, every night, I pray he will wake up. What more can you ask me to endure? Kawana said something similar. But you think you can repeat all that? This time, say it to her. Isn't that... Sawa-san? You and Kawana can congratulate yourselves. You got vengeance on a monster. But what you're choosing not to see is that your actions had consequences for her. It's vicious. I've seen this before. Justice for one at the cost of another. Someone innocent always pays the price. I won't... I won't just sit here and watch as history tries to repeat itself. This phone isn't being traced by anyone. So, if you have a change of heart, just give me a call before you turn yourself in. That's all I had to say. We're back. Poor Sawa-san. Poor Sawa-sensei. Right here okay, Yagami-san? Yeah. I'm gonna go talk to Kawana. Need to tell him I met with Reiko Kusamoto. He's gonna be pissed, you know? He's gonna try to rip you a new one. <laughs> That's true. So you might want to sit this one out. Are we gonna fight again? <laughs> you sure? Because I'll totally take you up on that. What do you guys make out of that? Reiko's voice actor did a great job. She did. And he left her with something to think about. But I mean, I still don't see her turning herself in just after that. She might need a little bit more of a push, something else to happen. Hopefully not another innocent person getting caught in the crossfire before she finally decides to do something. But I just feel, I feel really sorry for her. Waiting for her son every night, every night, waiting and hoping that he'll wake up. And I know that she feels like any day he's going to wake up, but from like an outside perspective, it's like it's pointless to even hope that. You would think like it's pointless to even hope that. You love how gray this game's villains are. Fantastic. I was just saying that earlier. That's exactly what I was saying earlier. Okay, let's go see Kiwana. Oh no. He's got a gun. What they've got weapons. Let's do this. Ow. Oh, if I push triangle, I can probably do something. I create some stuff.
Really, guys? get to him oh maybe up the stairs maybe not yeah what we got here oh meat here haven't seen your mug in a while it's only been two or three days where's Kawana? hmm how should I put this <laughs> would you freak out if he was right behind you you know this kind of shit is why you get on my nerves <laughs> couldn't we have done this by phone I just came from seeing Reiko Kusumoto I told her to turn herself in for murdering Kawai five years ago you what? What did she have to say about that? That she had no sins to atone for. Of course not. Look, what do you think you're doing? Her part in this is done. Don't drag her back into it. This isn't yours to finish. You would just let Sawa Sensei stay collateral damage. How do you think her folks feel? They probably think you killed their daughter. And they don't know why, or if justice will be served. Do they have to suffer like that? All without even knowing the truth? <sighs> Would Sawa Sensei want that? You talk about justice, but she keeps getting left out. You aren't even trying when it comes to her. Say whatever you want, but if you cause Kusumoto san any more pain, I will never forgive you. That's exactly why I didn't tell you I was going to meet her. Listen, Yagami. She hides it well, but she's never gotten over the fact Mitsuru tried to jump to his death. Oh, I don't doubt that. And she's not sure how to feel about killing Kawai. Unlike me. If she was anything like you, I would have pushed her harder to confess. There's no evidence that she killed Kawai. He simply vanished from Kamurocho, and the police didn't even know about it. Besides, there's no case without a corpse. Point being, she'll never be charged. Right, Kawana has Kasai's body hidden somewhere. I remember Yui Mamiya said so. Even if she did turn herself in, the police wouldn't know what to do with her. Don't think for a second that you're getting a pass here. You've killed, what, seven people now? Do you even hesitate anymore? Hm. You got proof? Running around making baseless accusations. You sure you were a real fucking lawyer? My colleagues in Kamracha are getting ready to appeal Ahara's case. Your actions are going to be put under a microscope. I wouldn't even call that bad news. I want the world to know their bullies are getting what they're due. Jeez. And by then, I'll probably be going by a different name. Maybe even a different look. You're just going to keep doing this? Did Sawa Sensei sacrifice mean nothing to you? Is that the only thing keeping you around? Truth be told, I don't think exposing everything is even in Sawa's best interest. What? Sawa-kun herself felt guilty. I just sent you the proof. Oh, now what? What is this? An audio file? That's what it looks like, After Yagami. After Ahara-san lost in court, she called me. I recorded our conversation. Toshiro-kun came running to the roof. His face was pretty swollen. And a few minutes later, a student named Mikoshiba came up looking for him. I'll never forget the fear I saw in Toshiro-kun's face. He told me about everything. The teasing, the beatings, the theft. How nobody was on his side. And yet, I had to deny all this in front of an entire courtroom. They said there was no hope, that I was the only witness with no proof whatsoever. 
Believe me, I never wanted to do that. Sawakun's testimony in court was false, and she was racked with guilt over it. And your first thought was to record it? When she was at her most vulnerable? Yes. And then I played it for Ihara-san. He had the right to know the real reason his son killed himself. All you did was light the fires of vengeance in Ahara's heart because you didn't want to be alone. You know, I've heard that bullying is almost instinctive. That's why people who do it never stop. I mean, think about it. Would you stop cleaning a toilet just because it'll get filthy again? Somebody's always got to get his hands dirty. And that somebody's gonna be you? If it means I can prevent another Mitsuru Kusumoto, yes, I will keep killing. These bastards who prey on the defenseless must be punished for all to see. I wish the law would do its job. Because deep down, I don't want to do any of this. I understand what you're saying, but you're taking it too far. Just stop, Kawana. If you really want to stop me, you're gonna have to kill me and call it justice. Damn. <sighs> I thought you guys were gonna start another fight. It was a bitch cleaning up the mess last time. Sorry, bro. Next time I go up against him, it won't be just a few scratches. Well, when that time comes, take it anywhere but here. I think I'll call it a day. I should get back to 99 and rest up. Whoa. Kuwana basically said, if you want to stop me, then you're going to have to take justice in your own hands, just like I do when I kill, when I kill bullies. Like, if you want to take me out, you have to become like me. that Kawana is a very interesting character. Okay. Let's let's head back. Let's keep going. We have like 30 minutes left. I want to see how much more progress we can make in that time. Okay. We're here. Guess we rest up now. Hello? It's Shirosaki. Are you in Yokohama again, Yagami-san? Yeah. Is this about Ahara's trial? Yes. Regarding the appeal. The prosecution says they want to consult with us. Off the record. Off the record? What do you mean? They want to discuss with the judge beforehand whether or not Ahara's murder footage is admissible evidence. The video has gone viral, of course, and nobody's really sure how to handle it. Is the prosecution really going to hold the line on it being a deep fake? That's quite possible. Which is why we're meeting today in the courthouse conference room. I'm sorry for the short notice, but could you join us? Of course. I'll be there. Thank you very much. No need to rush. There's still plenty of time. Just be sure you're there, please. I should take a taxi to the courthouse. Okay, yes. Let's... Yes, we have 20 minutes. Let's go. With what? Soul Blazer? Margarine? Catch up with Omurice? What's up, like a twin dragon? You see ketchup on your mac and cheese when you were little? They. What do I like ketchup with? I just like ketchup on burgers and with potatoes, like fries, hash browns, um, 
Any anything potato basically. Mm. Excuse me. I don't, I don't do it with my eggs. I don't do it with pasta. I don't I don't even like it with my hot dogs anymore. I used to, but now I'm just more of a mayo um, mayo. Mustard girl. Oh god, not mayo. Not mayo. <laughs> I'd rather do ketchup than mayo. You hardly use it. Bologna sandwich with ketchup? No, mustard. I could do a, a little bit of mayo on a bologna sandwich. Not a lot though, just a little bit. Alright, to the courthouse. Tokyo District Courthouse. Probably finish up this little section and then we'll have to go. So what you're saying is, Yui Mamiya was not a victim of sexual battery, but rather she conspired with Akihiro Ehara to fake a murder alibi. Mm -hmm. We've already closed the book on that ordeal, yet now the defense wants to write a sequel? Mm -hmm. Prosecutor, Sadao Takano. To establish the defendant's motive in the harassment, we need to bring the Mikoshiba murder to light. The groping itself was staged, it was all part of their script, right down to the guilty verdict. It sounds like the defendant has some strong hostility for the court. Ihara got the court to accept his murder alibi by twisting the legal process to his own ends. It was easy to miss, because at the time, Mikoshiba's body hadn't been found yet. But we have to admit that we all got duped. We? You're not even a lawyer. You're a detective. Yagami-sensei still has a license to practice. Forget what I said if it offended you, prosecutor. My superiors always told me that in his youth, your Genda-sensei was a difficult man. He'd insist his clients were innocent, persisting even in the face of conviction. He was hostile to the prosecution and was known to fraternize with Kamurocho Yakuza. But it was his sheer disrespect that made my boss hate him. Damn. You sure know an awful lot about Genda Sensei. Why are you bringing him up? Because I honestly can't say I like him. He treated me like a child when I was starting out. I'll tell you this there's no higher praise for the defense than being called difficult by the prosecution. Hmm. Genda Sensei was worried about Sari san's career, but I guess he fought the prosecution, prosecution just as hard back in the day. Huh, I guess Sarisan picked up some of that attorney spirit from Genda himself. Now, if we can get back on track, can we confirm the defendant himself has agreed to the appeal? Yes. But if Ehara really committed the murder, why would he agree to his alibi being scrutinized? Ehara's objective isn't to get away with murder. Then what is he after? Making a mockery of the legal system. Then it'd be best not to pay him any attention. And you'd be right. If your priority is saving face in front of the court rather than preserving fairness in the law. Ooh. You've got a real attitude. But what do you say to that? Sorry I'm a bit late. Is this the public security so, guy? So, with this appeal, the defense wants to assert the defendant's innocence by establishing his guilt in a murder. Wait, before we go on, who is this? He's from the Metropolitan Police. Considering Ehara was on the force, he has a vested interest here. He's not here to participate, don't worry. The police can't afford to be embarrassed any further. We need to send the right message to the public. Can we have your name, please? The name is Bondo. And your title? Think of me as a kind of police coordinator. <laughs> but don't let me interrupt the proceedings. Forget I'm even here. Please, continue. Idemi Bondo. 
So much for this meeting being off the record. Allow me to restate the prosecution's opinion to the judge. We cannot allow the murder footage to be used as new evidence in Akihiro Ehara's appeal. It's nothing but an online hoax of unknown origin. We can't just casually introduce that into court. Indeed. Furthermore, if Ehara bears such hostility towards the court, the footage might end up being a trap. Trap? Yes. What if the next viral video proves the original footage was doctored? What if the proceedings have already begun by then? Do we drop the appeal and call it a day? We cannot allow a man like Ehara to swing the court around by its nose at his whims. With that in mind, I believe Ehara's conviction should be upheld and enforced. But he's a murderer. Would the defense care to comment? Did you think any of this through before filing this appeal? Yes. I don't like your tone. We aim to prove the defendant's innocence, no matter what your objections may be. And what about you? What do I think about Ahara's appeal? How do I answer him? Ahara must atone for Mikashiba's murder. Ahara never committed sexual battery. Ahara's guilty verdict was wrong. Ahara must atone for Mikoshiba's murder. That's the main thing that's on my mind anyways. Ahara has to atone for Mikoshiba's murder. I can't look the other way while a killer evades his sentence. <laughs> Come now. Is that why you're appealing? If so, you're barking up the wrong tree. Yagami-san, I understand how you feel. But being innocent of sexual battery isn't guilt for Mikoshiba's murder. What? What? We're only appealing the groping case here, so... Oh, right. <laughs> then, uh... What is this nonsense? The, uh, subtitles were a little bit wrong there. Okay, um... Okay, so Ihara's guilty verdict was wrong. Ihara's guilty verdict was wrong. We don't think there was enough evidence at the first trial to result in that verdict. There was fiber from the victim's underwear found on Ehara's hand. That was a trick. It was set up with cooperation from the victim. There is no evidence it was a trick. Are you saying Yui Mamiya and Ehara met beforehand? Is there proof of that? Was there perhaps any security footage we didn't see? No, the station erases the footage from their cameras after a few days if there's no need to keep it. Right. But if there's even a chance Ehara and Mamiya were a team, the underwear fiber proves nothing. Hmm. What were the other deciding factors? Security footage? The smartphone videos we kept seeing on TV? Those don't prove the crime either, because there was a huge time gap in them. What? We've done enough legwork to know. In the security footage that supposedly proved Ahara's guilt, there was a big gap. What was it? Did you walk around the site with your own two feet, Prosecutor? Uh, well, no. But I have been to Shinjuku Station plenty of times. Then you must know they have a mountain of security cameras covering every angle. But if you went there to look carefully, you'd find there are some blind spots. That's a horror running, while Mamiya chases after her. It seems as though the whole chase is recorded, but this area in dotted lines is a blind spot no camera saw. That's the momentary gap in time where Ahara and his double switched places. The victim was running right behind Ahara. She would have noticed if they swapped places right in front of her eyes. Keep up! I said they oh, were she knew together. About the swap all along. In on it together. They were all in on it from the start. Can you prove that? We don't have to prove the defendant is innocent, Takarasan. What? All we have to prove is that the evidence provided by the prosecution at the trial was insufficient to determine guilt. Because that's the role of the defense counsel. Indeed it is. If the prosecution can't debunk any and all possibility that the train groping was a put-up job, then it's innocent until proven guilty. Then the defense should have brought it up the first time. Although I doubt Shirosaki-sensei actually believed in the defendant's innocence herself. The guilty verdict at the trial was orchestrated by the defendant. It was our error not to have seen it at the time, but it would be another not to correct ourselves now. 
Stop being so dramatic. He's just a subway purr. You'd like to think that. That is a statement I cannot abide. The law can't give the impression that a false charge is permissible, even for a subway purr. Right. I take that back. I misspoke. Hmm. I do believe this case is worth a trial in the appeal court. If the court was misled by a hostile defendant, then only the court can correct it. Thank you very much. However, I too have seen Ihara-san's murder footage. I believe it would be difficult to introduce it as evidence in this trial. Therefore, I cannot allow it to be brought into the courtroom at this time. We can't use the murder footage to flip the guilty verdict. We can't even bring it to court. That's fair. It's like they were saying, it's not really related to this specific case. Like, it is, but it's not, right? Sorry, son. Think you've got this covered? Huh? I'll poke my head in at the office later. Very well. We'll be expecting you. Bando-san, was it? From public security? I don't recall saying my department. <laughs> but yeah, that's right. Do you know Reiko Kusamoto, the vice minister at the Ministry of Health? Of course. Any particular reason she's under constant surveillance? <sighs> A rather bold question, isn't it? It's just you and me here. I see you know how to cut to the chase, Yagami-sensei. At this point, there's no way a guy from public security can show up and not be related to Reiko Kusumoto. Ahara's trial can't be that important to you. So I have to figure I'm the reason you showed up. You want to know where Kawana is, don't you? Were you finally forced to get off your ass because nobody else can get eyes on him? Kawana. Otherwise known as Yu Kitikata, he's wanted on suspicion of murder. If you know where he is, please do tell. Wanted for murder? Huh. Because you know, I thought it was RK acting on your orders that killed Sawa Sensei. Ooh, straight for the jugular there. You think you can hide that fact forever? Even the cops in the field have their suspicions. Do they? <laughs> Well, the cubicle workers always resent the corner offices. Officers in the field complain about their superiors. I did the same thing back in my day. And why did you use thugs as your pawns instead of officers? Is that how Sawa Sensei got roped into this? I'm afraid I'm not following. No doubt about it. He's the one controlling RK. At the very least, he's one of the guys giving orders to Soma. You knew it was going to be a dirty job from the beginning. That's why you couldn't use anybody on the force. Or maybe you just weren't able to find an underling you could fully trust. <laughs> That's a good one. Public security's only tricks are surveillance and call tracing. You leave the dirty work to the thugs. That may be true, but it's enough to crush the likes of you. I'm gonna ask just in case. Where is Soma now? Hand over Kawana to me and there will be no more victims. What? Do you have a reason to protect him? I already know he's going around executing bullies. He's a disturbance to public order. But he wasn't the point. one who killed Sawa Sensei. I didn't come here to argue. I came to issue an ultimatum. Uh oh. That doesn't sound good. Basically, help us find Kuwana or we will squash you. What's my next move? They're looking for Kuwana. What should I do? 